Welcome, friends. It's wonderful to be able to gather with you again on this uh, fourth Sunday of Advent. Hard to believe how quickly time goes. <laughs> We're here at St. Peter's this weekend. We have our manger scene and everything all set up. We have an opportunity to be able to share with you a message. Probably our, this will be our last message that we give for this 2020 year together. It's been nine months, nine months that we've been gathering together. So it's really wonderful to gather with you. Reverend Aaron McIntyre, Father Matthew Brunet, we wish to welcome all those watching from Knox St. Paul United Church as well as St. Peter's Catholic Church, any church around this area or beyond. If you're watching with us here today, we welcome you and it's great to gather with you. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name was Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning! You're beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that, but the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child, will, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son, old as she is? Everyone called her barren. And here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing, you see, is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes. I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I came across a story a little while back that I found pretty cute, and uh, what Reverend Aaron and I were looking at, what we were going to talk about this weekend, the story kind of popped into my mind, and so it's a cute one. So. An 87-year-old man moped through life, living in a sleepy village outside of Rome with his books and his seven cats. His wife had died years earlier. His only daughter worked in Afghanistan. He lived a dull rhythm, seldom venturing out, rarely speaking to others. Life was colorless, drab, and lonely for this man. One day, though, he decided to do something about it. Giorgio Anzalotti put himself up for adoption. That's right, this 87-year-old placed a classified ad in Italy's largest daily newspaper that read, Seeking Family in Need of a Grandfather, would bring 500 euros a month to a family willing to adopt me. The ad changed Giorgio's life. The paper ran a front page article about him. Inquiries poured in from as far away as Columbia, even New Jersey. Angelotti's, Angelotti became a celebrity overnight. He went from having nothing but time to having scarcely enough time to handle interviews and requests. A pop star responded, a millionaire offered servants in a seaside villa, but one letter stood out. Why? Because every member of the family, the father, the mother, sister, and the brother, had bothered to sign it. So that's the one he accepted. He moved into their ground floor apartment began taking walks in the garden, helping with dishes and homework, and enjoying the after-supper gelato that followed every Sunday night's dinner. I could not have chosen better, he said. Maybe it was luck, maybe it was God looking after me, I don't know. I knew right away, though, having responded to their invitation, that I had found my new home. I was part of a family again. I'm so happy. That's a really sweet story. And it makes me think that there, there's something about family. Now, I know families are complex, they're diverse, they have their intricacies and their dynamics. 
all the same, there's something about families. The ones we choose or the ones we're born into. Maybe the ones we're chosen into. Um, but we, we have our families and they support us. They ground us. They teach us who we are. They help to raise us. They help us to, to be who we truly are. And they share love in the best cases. It should surprise us that God would want to be part of a family too, even though we obviously think of God as not needing anybody and so forth. But the fact of the matter is he wanted connection. He wanted to know what it would be like to be part of, of who we are and what we have. And so we have the Annunciation, which Reverend Aaron read for us here in our Gospel today, which is the stepping stone, the beginning, the foundation, the building block of God saying, I want to be part of a human family. and This is where it starts. It's not your typical family, though. Mary is a, a young girl, teenager, likely, and not married. You, you'd expect God would want something a little more settled. Yep. But God chose Mary. He thought she'd be a good fit, a good mother, someone who'd raise her son well. So God entered into this family. God chose this family as a way of becoming closer to us. Not your typical family, but a family filled with love, filled with grace, a family that loved God and God's dream for the world. Yes, and we can obviously see the man that Jesus would become, the compassionate, loving, gentle human being, but the revolutionary that he was for his time, had to have learned everything from, from his family. So we know that whatever the dynamic was that that Mary and Joseph were all about, that there was something special that came from this that was able to really make a difference in the life of, of Jesus because he grew up with such love, as Reverend Aaron mentioned. Yeah. There's that nuclear family, but also the extended family yeah. because Gabriel, in his enunciation to Mary, says, you know what, your cousin Elizabeth, she's a bit older to become a first-time mom. We didn't think she could have children, and all of a sudden she's pregnant. She's six months gone. Nothing's impossible with God. Mary takes that hint and says, you know what, I need to go and visit. Yeah. I need to go visit my cousin Elizabeth. And together they, they help each other out. Mary helping Elizabeth as she gets into those final stages of pregnancy and things become, well, let's face it, a whole lot more complicated. Even. <laughs> and, and Elizabeth with Mary teaching her what might be coming next, helping her to figure out how do they want to raise their sons, these sons who are going to change the world. The two of them together. Family is so, so important. There is need, and that's what we see when we look at this gospel. There's a need, and Mary recognizes the need to be able to leave her situation, which is unsettled and which is full of questions, to put herself aside to be of service to someone else who needs her. Family does this, and you know, we, we reach out, and it's one of the things we've noticed all of us in this COVID time, you know, the desire to want to connect with family. It hurts us uh, when we have family far away that we can't see, whether it be parents in regards to their children in university or, or, or married, living further away, or children who are distant from their own parents, even for us in our church families. We know that Christmas is next week. And we want to be able to open our doors and to welcome everyone to be able to come in and to feel a part of the family of the church of which we are all a part. But we know that there are limitations there too. We know that we can only bring in so many and, and our situations that we have with our churches for the most part is we're pretty much full up. There is no room in the inn. And that really bothers us because we recognize that being part of a church family is an essential. We want to be able to be there for each other. We want to be able to celebrate Christmas together. We also want to serve each other and be present to each other. And we know that right now we can't do that. And it, it's difficult for us. Well, there's no room in your end. We still have room <laughs> at Knox St. Paul's. Just putting in a plug. There you go. <laughs> but your point is, is key, that we want to be essential. We want to be able to support each other and care for each other as a family of God. Yes. And we will care for each other, neighbors, friends, family alike, whether we are part of the Christian family or a different faith or no faith, because that's what we as Christians are called to do, is to share that love and that grace and to help be a family for people who might need it. And maybe one of the things that we can be challenged with as well this Christmas is to be able to see with the larger family of what we are, with our neighbors, 
people that we know beyond us who may be really struggling during this Christmas time is how can we be attentive to the greater family of, of God that we all belong to? You know, maybe we can't get together for a meal because of COVID and so forth. We could perhaps have extra from our meal that we could deliver to a family or to someone that we know could be alone. We also could find a way of maybe placing a phone call to someone that we know is really struggling at this time. We can connect on Zoom. I know yep. families that are each having their, their turkey dinners or, or whatever yep. meal you have at this time of year. And they connect over Zoom, set up the camera and, and see each other and connect. I was told though, passing the turkey, passing the, the dressing, don't do that because <laughs> it, it messes up your computer a little bit. Just do um, that. But, but there are different ways of being creative, of reaching out, of connecting with family, family by blood, the family we choose, however, however we define that. So this yeah. Christmas, may we connect with each other, may we support each other, may we recognize how important we each are to each other. Amen. Um, friends, let's join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Let's pray. God, this day we give you thanks for families, the families that we choose or the families that are chosen for us. God, we give you thanks for the times they can be loving and supportive. But we also know that families have their own dynamics and complexities, and not every family is loving or supportive or healthy. And so we ask for your grace and your support and your, to be with families that need it. We, need, we ask for places of safety for folks who need to, to leave their family at this time. God, we also know that in this time, in COVID times especially, a lot of us are separated from our families. We can't see each other and it causes great grief. Or maybe we've had someone die in recent, in the last year or so or, or longer and we miss them terribly. And so we pray for your peace and your joy to be with us even as we miss our family. We continue to pray also for all those who are on the front lines again. I mean, it's been nine months in that uh, we've been gathering like this and COVID has been a part of our daily life. We think of those who selflessly are of service um, in any capacity, particularly in the healthcare fields. We know that with the increased rates going up everywhere and the vaccine on the horizon and so forth, we just pray, especially at this during this Christmas time, holiday time for safety. We think of all those who are of service, for protection for them, that we will work together to protect each other and that we will do our parts to be able to keep strong and well this holiday season. Um, and God, you know the prayers that we carry out yeah. in our hearts. And so we take a moment to name those for you. Trusting that you answer all our prayers, we gather our prayers together, saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Before we give our final blessing, uh, we just want to be able to, once again, as this is going to be our last session for this year of 2020, we want to thank you for journeying with us over the last nine months. We have birthed something pretty cool yeah, during these really difficult days. And we appreciate, both Reverend Aaron and I appreciate the opportunity we've had to be able to grow individually in our own faith journey we have pushed each other to learn different strategies and to be able to think outside the box. And this has been just phenomenal. I'm very grateful to Reverend Aaron for coming up with this idea back in March of, of gathering and sharing an ecumenical prayer service. It's been great. Well, and likewise, I'm grateful for you agreeing to do this because it makes it so much more enjoyable yeah. than just doing it on my own. And it helps both our faith communities, I, I think, and hope, and, and uh, I hope that you all enjoy this as well. We've, we have heard comments back from a number of you on how much you do appreciate this, and so we want you to know we appreciate it too. 
We thank all our friends. We think of all those who helped to be able to put the videos up. I'm so grateful. Reverend Aaron does this every week. Terry, uh, the St. Peter's, manages to be able to put it up for the parish, uh, for my parish as well. And so I'm so grateful. And uh, so as we say this blessing, we just want you to be able to know that uh, for our Christmas celebrations, even if our church, St. Peter's Church anyway, is full for Christmas in terms of our three Masses, but we will have online through the Facebook page and YouTube um, through St. Peter's Catholic Church Cornwall, we have recorded a Christmas Mass as well as a separate children's service that will be on uh, released, I think, 5 o'clock Christmas Eve. Um, so we invite anyone who would like to be able to see that to feel free to go and visit there. We still have room at both our Christmas services. The four o'clock is a family friendly. The seven o'clock is a, a quieter, more reflective kind of Christmas service. I would say it's your traditional service, but <laughs> nothing's traditional this year. Sure. Um, but we are also live streaming on YouTube at seven o'clock. So for those of you, and, and if you are live streaming with me and have grape juice and some bread or, or wine and bread, we're celebrating communion too, and you can have that ready for, for that. And you just go to Knox St. Paul United Church on YouTube. on YouTube. There you go. All right, I like it. Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather yet again as a family. We thank you for this family, which is viral, which is beyond our own, virtual, our, our, our virtual beyond our own groupings. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of being Christian. We thank you for being born as one of us and among us. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together as we're doing this day. And we just ask for blessings on all our friends, all members of our family who are watching, those who are a part of this, those who wish to be a part of it, those who are just through association a part of it. And we ask that your blessings will fall upon each of us, especially with the blessing of peace, which Christmas brings. We make this prayer in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, we wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the new year, which will hopefully bring new things. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.